Hey everyone, James Reeves, TFB TV here at Enforce Tech in Nuremberg with my good buddy Felix. We're at the Hanel booth. Hanel, many of you don't know much about it because it's really hard to get in the U.S. Other than I think BNT might be importing one of your rifles. So tell us about your company. So yeah, Hanel is uh, originating from Suhl, right in the center of Turing, um, a small state in Germany. Um, it's basically the grandfather of the Sturmgewehr. Hanel was manufacturing the um, SCG-44 originally. And uh, right now we are specialized in military sniper rifles and uh, also semi-automatic AR piston-driven systems in different calibers and all kinds of uh, innovations on the uh, governmental and uh, police side of the And market. we're gonna go over both of those today. Exactly. So let's start with the HLR with the bolt action. Exactly. So we got it uh, behind me. The HLR is basically the second generation of our RS series, which is most uh, known for the RS9 or G29 uh, bolt action sniper rifle in use by the German Special Forces and it's basically the slimmer and lighter version of it. So it features basically a completely toolless adjustable uh, butt stock um, with interfaces of course for back riders and uh, monopods for example. Um, foldable stock to the uh, right side of the weapon so you can carry the weapon easily on your back. And um, free position safety, firing pin safety of course. So. Even if your trigger fails, there's no chance you're accidentally firing. Right. So the most uh, effective safety, basically. 10-round um, box mag proprietary to our weapon. Steel receiver and action. And uh, what's new is basically the handguard. We got a six-position M-Lock handguard. Um, uh, Seven-position, sorry. Um, on the sides, the lower side and 8 slot length for the uh, compact version of the 308. For the 338 we got a 10 slot version so everything you have for night vision clip-on devices, thermals will fit on there and it's basically best suited for example for ARCA rails and uh, all, the ki all kinds of attachments. So you can basically adopt it on this tripod for example uh, which we think is pretty neat and uh, gets more common uh, on the uh, law enforcement side. It's funny because I think a lot of people in the United States are surprised to see that key mod is still kind of a big deal yeah. in Europe. It is. And so to me, when you're talking about these new M-Lock handguards, I mean, am I telling the truth? Like key mod's still a, a big deal here in Europe. It, it is, but the reason for this is pretty simple. Um, it's because it's in circulation. And nobody in Europe, um, especially for example in Germany, we are as civilians prohibited to use uh, weapon lights or lasers, for example. So there isn't really a need to attach something to the side of your handguard. So I had no idea. So no WMLs, no lasers, no nothing. No, unfortunately not. But I can go and buy a suppressor from like the grocery store. Uh, in, in some countries in Europe, you can actually. Uh, in Germany. For example, you have to, uh, you can buy it, but you have to uh, basically get your stamp for it. Um, so that that's easy, but weapon lights is a big no-no, so. Talk to me about the HLR accuracy-wise. What can I expect to get out of this? So all our sniper rifles basically leave the factory with at least one MOA or less. Our goal is, of course, less. So nice, uh, interesting, uh, thing about, for example, accuracy of the RS9 338. Best was uh, nine millimeters, so I think that's 0 0.3 MOA. On one Pretty impressive, it's not too shabby. That's for, for a factory rifle, so nothing specially tweaked there, just factory rifle. Uh, same for the 308 and the 65 Creedmoor. Uh, so pretty uh, solid system. We don't have, for example, uh, uh, quick change barrel, so it's everything is uh, solid, it's action, uh, barreled action, so nothing to move there. Uh, How many calibers does this come in? At the moment, uh, four calibers, 338 Lapua, 338 Norma on request, and uh, of course, 338 Winchester and 65 Creedmoor. 
What's the most popular? <laughs> Three, uh, 308 and 338. Interesting. Okay, so is 65 catching on at all in Europe? Yes, it is, but um, you have to travel a little bit, at least from Germany uh, uh, to the surrounding countries, to shoot above 300 meters most of the time. So most people don't see the advantage of a 65 right now. But for uh, people who can travel, who are into competition, and who uh, PRS shooting is gaining more and more popular popularity right now, um, 6.5 is definitely a good option. The HLR, this is like the basic, most basic version of it, correct? Uh, not quite. Um, this is the HLR Pro. We have here three uh, different versions of it. There's a basic version of it, uh, which features uh, a black receiver, black barrel. Uh, on the 308, for example, no muzzle device, so you can attach your own if you want to. And um, has an AR compatible uh, stock. We will show that on the IWA show. In the next I see, of days. and we're going to be there, so we'll nice. be there to check it out. <laughs> what is the, the not the pro, but the basic model that you don't have here that you're going to have at IWA? What does that cost me? That's a pretty good question. Uh, depends, of course, on the condition you got uh, in in your country. Um, don't can't tell you. I can't tell you a retail price right now. I see. Now moving over, we've got <laughs> this sexy beast here. Pretty yeah. much the same bolt-action rifle, right? But... That's true. The system and all the furniture is basically the same as on the 308 uh, we uh, took a look earlier. But um, this is our HLR Subsonic, um, specifically made if you want to shoot short distances or be very quiet. And of course for special applications uh, in police and uh, military. It features an integrated suppressor with a 35 millimeter barrel length. Uh, in 308 uh, with an 8 inch twist so you can uh, get a hold of those heavy grain projectiles. Uh, the suppressor itself is easily de uh, detachable. You just unscrew it and by doing so you can also um, make the weapon more compact so you can easily transport it in a let's say a larger uh, sporting goods bag for example and you end up with a pretty small weapon at the end. That's an impressive suppressor. <laughs> it's, yes. it's just as long as the rifle. It is, it is. So your, your maximum length is basically the suppressor. If you have a bag that fits the suppressor in length, you will also can, can get a weapon in there. You could also beat somebody to death with that, I'm pretty sure. Yes, definitely. <laughs> What's it made out of? Stainless? It's, no, not really. It's aluminum. Mm -hmm. So it's oh, made. Really? Yeah, okay. it's made to be used with, um, for example, subsonic ammunition. You can fire supersonic out of it, but not that much, because as you know, aluminium suppressors, if they get too hot, they don't work as good anymore. So, yeah. Felix, tell me why this is the best bolt action rifle. This either model, the HLR generally. Why is the HLR series the best bolt action rifle that a human being can own? Yeah, it's not. It's a good one. <laughs> hey, I like an honest guy. Really, it, it, it depends on the task you have. If you want to have an, a proven system, a tested system that will withstand really adverse conditions, the HLR is definitely a really, really good rifle. Uh, we know that because it was tested, uh, otherwise it wouldn't be in use by the military. And we're pretty happy with it. And therefore, I think it's a very solid base platform with good accuracy. And uh, with the new upgrade uh, of the handguard, for example, it's also more modular than it was before. And therefore, I'm really happy with it and how it turned out after uh, the development. And therefore, I think it's a good, really good rifle. Well, I'm really happy <laughs> with how this interview turned out. And therefore, I think I'm having a good time here at Enforce Tech. Guys, stay tuned. We're bringing you more.